Chris Herring. And Chris, you are EMS coordinator for Imperial County, right? That's correct. I'm the emergency medical services manager and preparedness manager for the public health department. Okay, and for the most part, the last uh, three months or so, you've been hunkered down at the uh, the uh, county emergency operations center, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and um, for those not familiar, uh, Imperial County has an emergency operations center set up at the county center in Heber, and uh, well. That's where they are ready to handle most any emergency, uh, be it a hurricane, be it uh, an earthquake, uh, be it a pandemic. And um, so you guys are set up there. You've got the communications and the equipment and everything. So uh, that's that has been your life for a while, right? That's correct, Carol. And, and I can touch a little bit. I'll, I can provide a little bit more in-depth detail on the county's emergency management structure. Um, you know, we, we do operate primarily out of that emergency operations center in Heber. Um, we, we follow, it's called the incident command system, as well as a state emergency management system and national incident management system. And, and really all of those, those systems and those processes, they're, they're, they're mirrors of each other. It just takes it from the local to the regional, the state, and federal level. Um, we operate un under that structure. It gives us the ability to coordinate between all of the different sectors that are involved um, in, in any response, really. Um, you know, law enforcement, public works, public health, our medical partners, uh, behavioral health, social services. It gives us a single place to operate out of. Um, we're also operating out of, it. it's called a, a DOC or a Department Operations Center. Um, and, and that's specific to the public health department for us right now. So we have a lot of um, the work that's being done by the health department is being done through our, our DOC, which is kind of the mirror image of the county's emergency operations center, um, but it's specific to public health. It gives us the ability to really coordinate all of the different activities of the public health department. Um, and it links in very closely with the emergency operations center for that overall um, situational awareness for, for the community, for, for the emergency response partners in our healthcare system. I do have a couple of questions for you, and Scott Dudley uh, has joined us. You're there, right, Scott? Okay, I thought Scott was there. Um, We'll have to see if we can connect with him. Uh, I know how I can. Uh, we'll get to we'll get to Scott. Uh, but okay, a couple of questions. Um, my understanding is roughly 300 uh, individuals have been transferred out of the Imperial Valley for um, care due to um, the uh, COVID-19 virus. And somebody said, "Oh, you know, the other counties are really upset." Um, but you know, and I understand, there is a protocol in place, okay? Fires in Northern California, Imperial County firefighters respond. An earthquake in Imperial County, counties from uh, Sonoma and uh, North, they respond and help out us. And that same protocol set up for uh, a, a medical emergency like this as well, right? That's correct, Carol. Um, and, and really, this incident, what it, what it does, you know, this response to COVID, um, what it's shown is how effective our, our medical mutual aid system in California truly is. Um, again, it links in very closely with our fire and law enforcement partners. Um, but what we've been able to do, and, and, I, and I know that we've, we've, heard, we've heard that too, that, you know, the, the other counties may seem to be upset. Um, you know, in conversations with the other counties, with the emergency management officials, the healthcare providers, and healthcare systems, um, they're not upset, right? So, can you hear me, Carol? I can hear you. Great. Um, they're not upset with us. They understand that this is the system working. Um, California is is very good at mutual aid. Um, we truly are a, a statewide system where neighbor helps neighbor. And, and yes, so we, we still do continue to transfer patients from, from our two hospitals that, and, and it's for a variety of reasons. There's capacity, uh, reasons that, that some of these patients are transferred, and there's level of care reasons as well. 
Okay, and uh, those transfers are still taking place, right? They, they are. You know, it, the, the rate that they're going out has seemed to come down a little bit, um, you know, and, and that's for a couple different reasons. So we, we do continue to build the capacity within our health care system to, to manage and care for these patients, and that's really you know, where we've been successful in being able to keep some of these patients here locally. You know, and, and the other the other challenge I think that everybody is, is seeing in California is California's cases are starting to increase, not just in Imperial, um, but in some of our neighboring counties as well. Um, so everybody everybody shares the concern of not wanting to overwhelm uh, any one particular county's healthcare system. So you know, the state is reaching out a little more broadly to to spread these patients throughout California. Okay, I have another question. Uh, contact tracing, uh, tracking, uh, I know that's a little bit out of your area, but uh, is that like, um, you know, Philip Marlowe, private detective, uh, Sam Spade uh, doing uh, investigative work? In a sense. So it is public health detective work at the end of the day. Um, so, so we do have contact, or uh, we have case investigators and contact tracers, um, and, and it's a variety of staff. So it's, it's um, our epidemiology team is kind of leading this, this task for us. Um, but, and and they've, they've tapped into other uh, sections within the public health department to, to you know, potentially re retask individuals to assist with it. And we're also utilizing some state resources. California has the uh, California Connect, I believe, is the name of the contact tracing program that California has put into place. Um, so we actually have assigned contact tracers that are state uh, employees that do these con these contact tracing and case in investigations remotely for you know on our behalf as well. Okay, and the CDC team is here as well. That's correct. So we, we, we do have some support for our epidemiology, epidemiology department from the CDC. Uh, they've been boots on the ground for a week now. Um, they're, they're tying in to really focus on, on case investigations and, and provide some very, very close technical assistance and support to our epidemiology staff. Okay. One of the things that um, I have noticed in tracking the numbers is... Um, I don't think we in Imperial County have seen the spike, for instance, that San Diego County saw after opening up, but we have not really plateaued either, have we? You know, it's, it's kind of hard to, to say where we're at until we start seeing the downslope of it. Um, you know, we, we still do see new cases coming in at a pretty high rate throughout uh, the county, um, you know, and, and we are, you know, working hard we have not seen that that you know reopening yet um you know I, I think the important message to the community is you know we we all want to be there we all want to return to some sense of normalcy um we're just not there on the epidemiology curve yet uh, where, where we feel it can be done in a very safe and effective manner until we start seeing some you know some of these other metrics our test positivity rate um, and, and the new case rates start declining. Okay. And um, I, I, a dumb question, but when do you expect that to decline? <laughs> you know, it, it, one of the things that's been difficult for, for any, you know, any level of, of government or public health is coming up with accurate modeling and accurate predictions for, for what the future holds for us. Um, I think we're, we're, all kind of waiting to start seeing those numbers decline, but I don't think we have a, a it, it's not a scheduled appointment for us, so it's hard to tell. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, the response uh, countywide, I know, um, throughout the health department, uh, we were hoping to uh, be able to talk to Scott Dudley from Behavioral Health because um, that's an important component here. The, uh, you know, people are getting a, a bit of cabin fever, right? Yeah, and I know when he first called in, I could hear him on my phone. I don't know if you could hear him on your end. No, I think we lost him somewhere along the way. And it, it um, uh, you know, trying to run two phones through our system. I even read the manual, if you can believe that. 
<laughs> trying to figure out how to do it. And uh, I think somewhere along the way I lost him or somebody, I, I think somebody internally here disconnected him. But that's, um, we'll, we'll be talking to Scott another day. Yeah, and, and, and I know, you know, they do have resources available both for the community. Um, I, I think one thing for, for me from my side of this to highlight would be, you know, not only are these behavioral health resources available for the community, we have worked with our behavioral health department to set up some specific resources for our first responders, our law enforcement, firefighters, EMTs and paramedics, as well as our healthcare workers. Um, you know, they, they, they have a couple variety, there's a variety of, of resources that they can access. Um, you know, behavioral health is, has put together some wonderful um, online training, essentially webinars uh, that are recorded and available on their website, their Facebook page, as well as the Imperial County EMS Agency Facebook page. Um, they've also set up, you know, a, a, essentially a hotline, a, a individual counseling line that, that our, our first responders in the healthcare community can tap into. Uh, you know, we, we want to make sure that those resources are available for them. Uh, coming from personal experience, I know we can be some of the most uh, uh, stubborn when it comes to seeking out care for ourselves, but it is important um, to not just promote the behavioral health and, and these resources for the community, but also for our responders and our healthcare workers. And um, um, Chris, I believe we do have Scott on the line now, right? Are you there, Scott? He was there. I can hear him. You can hear him, but I can't. Okay, hang on, I'm gonna do it. Do a little bit of magic here. Scott, are you there yet? Okay. Not able to do that. Uh, we'll, uh, uh, as I said, we'll talk with Scott on another day. Did we miss anything, Chris, other than Scott? <laughs> no worries, Carol. Um, I, I, I think, uh, you know, it, it, it's, the, the technical difficulties that we're experiencing now, I, I think that, that can be some of what all of us are going to have to, you know, learn to manage in the future, not just, uh, or, you know, as we go through this response, that that personal connection, that face-to-face, -face, you know, it's challenging during these times. Um, you know, I, I, I think I think just this little, this little, you know, technical piece we're working through now, um, that can that can make it more challenging. So it, that's why we want to really encourage our, our providers and our community uh, to seek out those services that they need. Um, we are coming up to another another holiday. The Fourth of July um, is next weekend. Um, you know, it's 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 going to be tough for for us to celebrate that holiday in a socially distanced uh, and safe way. Um, but it's something that that you know we need to keep emphasizing. We need we need our community to to recognize that you know, we we need we need them to take action to help us all get through this, um, so we can start seeing that decline in the cases. Okay, Chris, we appreciate it. Uh, yeah, the Chris and Carol show went over very well. Uh, we didn't need Scott. Uh, but we <laughs> we will we will visit with Scott next week, so <laughs> we'll uh, we'll get to that. And you mentioned Fourth of July, um, you know, be safe not just with uh, the fireworks, but be safe in the uh, social gatherings, right? Exactly. Okay. Um, be safe in the social gatherings. Continue to wear the the face coverings. Uh, you know, wash your hands. Cover your cough you know, foundational public health principles that are a you know, century, century old at this point are getting more and more important to remember. Okay. Thank you, uh, Chris. We appreciate the visit. All right. Thank you, Carol. Have a good day.